Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the KK Launcher's Delta Pack, which is being made by Forum user Cartofel Kuchin. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks to add into the game is a lovely selection of parts to allow you to build Delta 2, 3, and 4 rockets, and they are some pretty nice parts. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison's sake and move it up a bit because some of these parts are a bit long. And then of course use our mod filter to just leave on launchers. Now sadly we have nothing in command and control, though that's not quite true because in fuel tanks we actually do have the 4 meter DCSS which does count as an unmanned command pod with a built in data transmitter, its own RCS, a 300 electric charge, 450 liquid fuel, fire, 50, rather not 550, monopropellant and 550 oxidizer and is a pretty beautiful part with a lot of detailing. I especially do love all the stuff at the bottom here, a very good looking. And of course it does have a two different variants of either the white or orange, whichever you do prefer. And all in all, a pretty nice little thing. And as for attachment points, we of course have one on the top, one on the bottom, one in sort of the central core area for a fairing later and then two on the sides also for fairings. Now next we have another version, the 5 meter DCSS, which is just a bit bigger and of course more rounded up at the top there. Again though, a beautiful amount of detail on this thing, a very good looking. And of course, once more, being an unmanned command pod with a data transmitter built in RCS, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. Now, next, we have a uh, common booster core holding a whole lot of liquid fuel and oxidizer, and it can actually be attached radially and is gigantic, or of course, you know, we also can attach it to uh, the bottom of the ship there. But let's actually pop it radially again to look at the bottom. As you can see, very nice looking, a lot of good detail to it, and with a nice little attachment point there for you to use. Now let's pop that thing off, because again, it's freaking gigantic, and then zoom in with the Delta III Thor oxidizer tank, which is, well, purely an oxidizer tank that holds quite a bit of oxidizer. And there we are, it has the uh, three logo there. And then after that, if we zoom back out a bit, we have the Delta III Thor tank, which is a long, thin tank there, holding liquid fuel. We then have a larger version of the Thor tank holding liquid fuel and oxidizer, and as you can see, it's just quite a bit larger. And if we pop all those off, we also have the Delta K upper stage, which once more is an unmanned command pod with a data transmitter built. In RCS, SAS, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. And if we pop that on, there is a pretty good looking little thing. Once more, beautiful detail on it, and just a solid upper stage. Now, next in the engines, oh boy, we've got some fun ones. And first we have, oh boy, that long string of characters, this upper stage engine here with a built-in alternator, an engine producing 50 kilonewtons of thrust using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and of course a gimbling range of 2.5 degrees, and just a nice solid looking engine. Now we then have a series of different solid rocket boosters, so let's uh, zoom out a bit there. We have the Gem 40, which produces 175 kilonewtons of thrust, uh, there we are, a nice small little one. We then have the Gem 40, which is another version with the same name, but a, just a slightly, slightly different, and having 150 kilonewtons of thrust. And the next one is the Gem 46 with 190 kilonewtons of thrust, and just a wee bit bigger there. We then have the Gem 46 alternate version, providing 165 kilonewtons of thrust there. We then have the Gem 60, producing 350 kilonewtons of thrust, also uh, having some color variation for you to enjoy there. Well, actually not color variation, but a shroud on the bottom, either the standard or shrouded down there. 
We then have the Gem 63 providing 380 kilonewtons of thrust, and then the Gem 63 XL again 380 kilonewtons of thrust, but bigger. And there you go, so it'll burn for a lot longer with a lot more solid fuel. And there we are, a lovely selection of a different solid rocket boosters there. We then have the LR-101 Vernier engine, which is... Well, boy, we gotta zoom way in for this one, because it's a tiny thing. There we go, that is the Vernier engine. Probably a little bit easier to see there, perhaps. But yeah, just a nice small little thing, producing 8 kilonewtons of thrust. We uh, then, if we zoom back out here, have the rl 10 b2 providing 95 kilonewtons of thrust there a bit more beefy of an engine compared to the other very nice indeed we then have the uh, rs 27 a providing 450 kilonewtons of thrust very good looking engine there a lot of good detailing we then have the rs 68 a providing either 25 kilonewtons of thrust or 1600 kilonewtons of thrust depending on if you want to use a lot more fuel or not so a lovely two-stage engine there that um is gigantic it's beautiful and finally we have the star 48b which produces a mere 30 kilonewtons of thrust and there we are just a lovely little engine now, after that, we have a nothing in command and control here in structural, also nothing. Robotics, nothing. Coupling, we got some stuff. And the first being some interstage decouplers and also acting as sort of shrouds for these bits up here. And we have the Delta II interstage, which is a decoupler with 500 force and sort of fits in... Oh boy, there we go, just kind of pop it there for things. There we are. It does have, of course, it, it goes in with some of the uh, internal attachment points that are on these things. Of course, I don't have the correct one for it right now. But uh, yes, a lovely interstage bit. We then have the Delta 3D coupler there, which, there we go, that one fits with that one. Excellent. And has all the lovely things and covering up all the inner bits of that section. We then have the Delta IV 4 meter interstage bit, which there we are, covers up all that quite nicely. And then we have the Delta IV 5 meter interstage, which covers all that up with a bit of space, a bit of extra space there, because of course it's for the other one. Now we then have a number of separators that are meant to be radially attached, and actually I should probably, to make it easier to see, Let's grab the giant fuel tank here, and there we go, because, well, there's some, uh, they're very long. <laughs> so like this one here, the CBC separator, as you can see, if I attach it here, it looks like there's nothing, because, well, where I have my mouse, there's nothing. But you can see down at the bottom of the screen, we have things now. And, uh, yeah, so they're very large decouplers, these ones. And so there we are. We can pop that there, and you can see that. But uh, this one, I don't believe... Yeah, oh, yeah, yes, it does. Has a top bit, too. So, yeah, definitely going to need to be used with the uh, longer tanks. But, yeah, some nice uh, top and uh, bottom bits for that separator. We then have uh, this uh, next version here. As you can see, there is the bottom bits. And there is the top bits on this one. A lot uh, less showing there, much more uh, in profile. And then we have uh, this, uh, the Gem 4X. Now this one, of course, is a bit uh, easier to put on the side, as you can see. And, oh good boy, I kind of attach it to the other thing. Let's grab another one. There we go. Excellent. So there's the two parts. We have the lower part there and the upper part right there. And then finally the Gem 6X, which, oh boy, let's rotate around a little bit more there, and boom. So there we go. There is the bottom of that one and the top of that one. And there we go. There are the different separators. Now in payload, oh boy, we got things. Now, of course, we have a number of uh, top fairing bits. I'm actually going to remove these separators here so it doesn't get in the way of other parts. And there we go. And let's go through those first. We have the Delta 3 4 meter a fairing here, which, if I rotate, fits quite nicely right there. Oh, God, let's remove this one, too. We then also have the Delta II 10-foot composite payload one. Uh, there we are. It'll attach there. It doesn't quite fit right, but hey, it, it attaches to the node, so I'm happy. We then, after that, have the Delta II 10-foot one. There we are. Another good one right there. 
And of course, the fairings on the outside just sort of being all white with the uh, nice sort of girdering on the inside. We then have the Delta II 9.5 foot one, which uh, I quite like this one. Got a nice little bump out there. Very cool looking, very nice indeed. We then have the Delta IV, a heavy metallic fairing, and this is a big one. Real big. <laughs> you can fit a whole lot of stuff into that thing. We then have the Delta IV heavy payload fairing here. There we go, not quite as large, but still quite good. We then have the Delta IV medium fairing, a lot smaller than the other two, but just as useful. And then finally we have the Delta IV medium plus. There we are, excellent. And those are all the different fairings. Now on top of that, we have a number of different adapters here, where we have the Delta 1875 millimeter payload adapter, which is a decoupler and, oop, no, wrong way. There we go, zoom in, perfect. And it has some really nice, good details there. I like all the little teeth up the top, a very good little decoupler. We then have uh, this payload adapter right here, which is a decoupler with RCS and a built-in monopropellant tank. That little ball right there. Very nice looking indeed. We then have the Delta II 371. Ooh, that's, a, that's a five. Yes, that's a five. I was about to say SA payload adapter. There we are. Another good little decoupler there. We then have the payload 5624 payload adapter. And uh, yes, yeah, just another good decoupler there. A bit more solid in nature. We then have the Delta II lower dual payload attach fitting. Another good decoupler. Excellent. There we go. And then after that, we have the Delta II middle dual payload attach fitting, which goes right there. Has a nice hole in the bit, in that bit there going through. And uh, yeah, just a good fairing there. Or a uh, fitting, rather. We then have the Delta II upper dual payload attach fitting. Excellent. Uh, there it goes. Fits in quite nicely. And then after that, we have the ULA-1574-4 payload adapter, a lovely decoupler. Then we have the 1575-5 uh, payload adapter, a little bit bigger. We then have the, oh boy, ULA-4293-5 payload adapter, even bigger. There it is, that's, uh, and it's quite large. And then the 4394 4394-5. Excellent. Bit more structural with a nice little dome in there. After that, we have the A937 payload adapter going quite a bit smaller. Then the B1194 payload adapter. Excellent. Then the C13 launch vehicle adapter. There we are. Then the C15 vehicle adapter. The C-19 vehicle adapter. We have a lot of these to go through, folks. The C-22 vehicle adapter. The C-25 adapter. The C-29 adapter. The C-44 adapter. We're just building a power now. The C-8 launch vehicle adapter. Much smaller. The C-9 launch vehicle adapter. The D-1666 payload adapter. A little evil. I like it. And, of course, a nice decoupler force. And then, my personal favorite, the EELV secondary payload adapter, because it has all sorts of nodes and every one is a decoupler. Look at all of those decoupling points. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and holy crap, we got through all those things. And then in aerodynamic, we have the Delta IV heavy nose cone there. Perfect. Then in ground, nothing. In thermal, we do, if we take off that nose cone, have the RS-68 thermal protection. And I'm actually going to flip that baby around. There it is. Some lovely thermal protection there. In electrical, we have nothing. Communication, nothing. Science, nothing. Cargo, nothing. And in utility, we have the final part, the Delta II turntable, which, as you can see, does have a little solid rocket booster in there producing two kilonewtons of thrust, and it fires it off in that direction. So it kind of, you know, spins it, which, hey, there you go. And that is all the parts for the Delta Pack. A lot to go through, especially in the uh, in the uh, payload category here. A lot of adapters. A lot of adapters. But let's take a look at a rocket I built with these parts earlier. Now, the mod does actually come with a number of pre-saved... Um, 
launchers for the Delta II, III, and IV, but of course I want to go and make my own, and why am I not seeing it in here? I know, uh, there it is, Delta Pack, lovely. I thought for a moment maybe I accidentally deleted it. And here is my god-awful monstrosity. It does actually fly, so that's always a good thing. Let's just go to launch and see how it functions this time. At least it, you know, took off when I tested it and flew halfway up the atmosphere. Let's see how it goes today. And SAS on throttle up and fire up. Oh, I forgot to... Add oh, oh boy, I forgot a thing. Let's... <laughs> let's revert that. I just for remembered that... I added the uh, stability enhancers after I test launched it. <laughs> it didn't do the staging for them. Okay, let's uh, let's just move these down here. There we go. Now SAS on and fire. Beautiful. Now it's actually going to take off and not explode. Perfect. Though exploding is very befitting for me. But yes, this is the uh, KK Launchers a Delta Pack, a load of great parts for you to make some very nice heavy lift rockets. I mean, just the solid rocket boosters alone, I think, are a great addition. A lot of different variety there with those, but also the different uh, upper stage bits, a lot of good fairings. All in all, just a good solid pack with a lot to offer. And, uh, yeah, I really have nothing more to talk about, but I did want to at least show a couple of the stages off on this thing, so I probably should have, uh, limited the solid fuel that was in these to make them go through quicker. Because if I launch it now, they're going to explode the rest of my rockets. So I'm going to stall here for a moment. And almost, almost, beautiful rocket, forgot to take a pose for the... Uh, thumbnail. There we are. Lovely. And then you high pack on. <laughs> and what the heck, let's launch these things and I have a little bit of fuel left. Perfect! And then the next stage with the awesome R568A. A very good, fun, useful rocket there. But let's throttle that baby down and open the next stage and fire the next rocket. Separate out from there. Beautiful. What the heck, let's launch the fairings at speed, and we've exploded a bit, but we're still alive! Somehow- oh yeah, because this is an unmanned command pod. Ha! <laughs> oh, beautiful. I, um, never actually got to that stage in my testing, I just kind of got like halfway up the atmosphere and went, Hey, it worked! <laughs> but yes, a fun pack, so if you'd like to take a look at it for yourself and make some actual competent rockets, then go have fun. Link is in the description as per usual, my friends. But that's going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we have a look at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one.